The story that you have asked me to tell you does not begin with the pitiful ugliness of Lloyd's death. It begins on a long ago day in August when the sun seared my blistered face and I was nine years old and my father and mother sold me to a strange man. I say my father and mother, but it was really my mother. I see them now as I saw them on the day we first met Lloyd. They are in the clothes that they wore to church on Sundays and when we went to town for window shopping. Because if you are going to hand your daughter over to a perfect stranger, you need to look your best. My mother wears a white dress with big red poppies all over it. Around her waist is a cloth belt in the same material. And on her head, a red, white, a red hat with a plastic white flower on it. Her shoes and bag are white. My father is in a safari suit whose color I can no longer remember. Or perhaps it wasn't a safari suit at all that he wore, and I've only put him in one because that is what all the men wore in those days. His hair shines with bell cream. It was a happy day for me. I wore my favorite dress, a white lacy dress with a purple sash, my Christmas dress from the year before. I was in town, far from the torments of my school playground nemesis, Nao, who tormented me as much at home as at school because he lived on our street. I was in town with my father, who held my hand as we walked. I was happiest about this, that I had him to myself, with one sister at school and the other recently dead. To crown my joy, a white woman in the chocolate section of the department store came up to us as we moved towards the lifts. She wore glasses with frames that elongated upwards into points on either side of her face, giving her eyes a distorted look as though I was seeing them through the milk bottles, the gold and silver topped ones that we bought at the shops. She looks like an angel. Isn't she an angel? She said. She gave me a dollar coin. It felt large and unfamiliar in my hand. That brings with it another earlier memory of the 25 cent coin that a nurse gave me when I cried hard after an injection at Gomo, the government hospital. I had bought sweets which now persuaded me to plant in the street outside his house. They would grow into a large sweet tree, he said. From the chocolate section on the ground floor, we walked to the lift. A man in a maroon uniform with a large scar running down his face announced each floor as we reached it. Third floor, children's toys, children's clothes and tea room, he said as we left the lift. My parents and I sat on one side of a booth a bee hovered over my glass of cherry plum before toppling into the fizzy purple drink. It tried to fly out, but its wings were wet and heavy, and it floundered in the bubbles. And there was ice cream to go with the cherry plum, an elaborate sundae that Lloyd bought for me. Lloyd was on the other side of the booth, complete with a whole banana and sprinkled with hundreds and thousands. I remember, too, the first words that Lloyd said to me. Speak, Nemozine, he said. I had no way of knowing then that Lloyd was teasing me or that Nemozine was another word for my name, memory. But perhaps I'm confusing this with the second day that I saw him, the day he walked me to his car and into my new life. <laughs>